millions of years ago, when the dinosaurs were walking on the, on the Earth, there was a marine reptile called a plesiosaur that was swimming in the sea. Plesiosaurs were reptiles. They evolved to live in the water, and they had four big flippers that they used to swim with. These flippers were similar to those of a turtle or a sea lion, but whereas these creatures really only used their front two, plesiosaurs used all four for propulsion. I'm an aerospace engineer, and I'm using my knowledge of hydrodynamics to work out how plesiosaurs swam from an engineering point of view. It's well known that the flippers of a plesiosaur go up and down like this, which is called underwater flight because it's similar to the motion of a bird. But the question is, how does the front set and the rear set move in relation to each other? How does the rear set move with respect to the front set? Do they both go up and down together? Does one go up as the other goes down? Or is it something in between the two? To answer this question, it's worth thinking about how you get around. If you want to walk, sorry, if you want to move efficiently, then you walk. But if you want to move with a high speed, then you run. So we've all got different motions that we can use, depending on what we want to do. And it would be the same for the plesiosaur. So if it wanted to go on a long distance migration, it would need to move efficiently. So it would use an efficient motion. But if it's getting chased by a predator or chasing some prey, then it would need to use a motion with a high thrust. So the plesiosaur would have different motions at its disposal, depending on what it wanted to do. And it's my job to work out what those motions are. What I found so far is that there's not an easy answer to the question. Yes, for a particular plesiosaur swimming at a certain speed, there is a motion that gives the highest efficiency and another motion that gives the highest thrust. But if the plesiosaur changes how fast it's swimming, the frequency of its flippers, or the spacing between the flippers, then this optimum motion changes. So in summary, there's not one motion that gives the best performance over all conditions, and it really depends on the other parameters of flapping. This application of physics to biology is called biomechanics. Not only can we use it to work out how animals such as the plesiosaur moved, but we can use this information as inspiration for engineering designs. So how about a submarine that's got flippers on it rather than a propeller? Such a system would be more maneuverable and potentially more efficient. Flapping wings can also be used to generate power rather than thrust, and it's possible to see wind farms, hydroelectricity, and tidal power use flapping wing technology in the future, which would be quieter and better for the environment.